You're listening to episode 147 with George Khalife. George is actually somebody that I had on at the beginning of my podcast. He's an overall amazing guy. He's the co-founder of Bookback, an app for students and book lovers to buy and sell books much more easily than anything out there today. Him and I have a real honest and candid discussion about entrepreneurship, what it really means, what you should be focusing on, and a lot of the traps that you know us young entrepreneurs sometimes fall in. I think if you are somebody who is passionate and curious and driven, I think you're going to find this conversation really invigorating for you. Without further ado, George Khalife. So George, I uh, I asked you this question um, mm-hmm. many 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 months ago, but I'll ask yep. it to you again. How do you spend your time here on planet Earth? Oof, I love this question all the time. Uh, but thanks for having me on the Human 2.0 podcast, Mark. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Um, look, look for me. I think it's just maximizing your potential, right? I think for one, uh, you know, obviously life's a journey. I know it sounds cheesy, but it really is. Like it's it's part of it is self discovery. So I think everybody has this pursuit of figuring out who they are, what they're meant to do. And, and then once you really get close to finding what your purpose is, I think you have a responsibility, right? To actually maximize, that's what I mean by maximizing that potential and just going all in. Um, and I think when you do that, not only will you be more happy, but everybody around you will be either inspired or motivated. And so there's a ripple effect. And so everything I'm doing right now on planet earth is, is getting me closer to figuring out what my purpose is, you know, whether it's building a business on the side, whether it's, you know, if it's at work, going more into the sales and marketing uh, space because I know I'm more meant for front office than back office. Like it's small things that you kind of can do that pivot and that get you closer. And it doesn't have to be a super, you know, large uh, feat for you to kind of figure out that purpose. I think it's just tiny chunks of, of daily momentum and, and that create like a, maybe like a larger ripple effect, but that gets you closer to that outcome. Hmm. I love the way you worded that, man. So, so you came on this podcast, episode 26. That's this right. podcast was totally something totally different. And I asked you, you know, how did you get started? And you talked about your, your physical journey, right? Yeah. So maybe you started, you build up momentum then. And you talked about, you started because you asked out this girl and she rejected you because she said you were, you were too fat. That's right. Um, I mean, was that part of was that part of building momentum? You think the fitness side helped you excel in the potential and the learning and the business and the marketing side, or what? I, I think, like for, honestly, from a larger perspective, I'm just I'm always kind of amazed at what I what I'm able to do versus what someone tells me I'm not able to do. Like I've always had naysayers every every step of the process, right? This girl, it was it was more so my looks, right? Which in the beginning, like, and, and I don't want people to think like my uh, my pursuit for for fitness and health was because of of her and stayed because of her but it, it was that spark you know and and honestly i think sometimes that that kind of doubt that someone has or that hate or whatever you want to call it allows you to que- to question certain things you know and then i got to a point where i was sick and tired of being sick and tired that's what i said on episode 25 and so that kind of got me started on this whole health uh, pursuit and, you know getting fit um, and losing weight in, in entrepreneurship and the academic side, I was always, especially in high school, I was this class clown, right? I was always having fun. I was the jokester, center of attention. Um, and I, I just didn't take that side of, of my life very seriously. And a lot of uh, teachers doubted, right? They said I wouldn't be a good communicator. They said I wouldn't go to a university and do well. I almost failed grade seven, man. Like, you know, I, I wasn't supposed to, to to go to university and do all these things. And And so for me, it was always like, I use these things as a challenge for myself. You know, and it's not to get back at people. It's just to say, like, look, this is what's happening. You know, you're catching yourself at maybe a low point. And can you surprise yourself? Like, what can you do right now that, that can actually shock you uh, in terms of, like, really surprising you in terms of seeing what you're, what you're able to do? You know, so be, just being optimistic and not limiting myself. Like, I don't, I don't live in a sandbox, dude. I'm just, I'm seeing what, what more I can do every day, you know? Yeah. I love it, man. So when you came on, uh, you were working at the Toronto Stock in- Exchange, but yeah. now I know you are working at a different place. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about that that transition, and maybe you know what was it a decision? How, how what was that like? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I think this is a, a great talking point. So I was with the TSX for three years, okay? Um, and I was in a, I started out in a rotational program, which is the associate program, then went on to uh, the sales side. So working with tech companies and helping them go public, it was super cool, man. Like I, I got really good experience. Uh, and, and here's an advice, that, uh, just a check in here. For a lot of people thinking that like the corporate world is so boring and I don't want to go into it and I love entrepreneurship and it's a sexier angle, I get you, trust me, like I, I understand you fully. But I think having that corporate maturity first and then going into maybe like a startup or a boutique firm is so important, dude. And I only realized that when I did the transition uh, to the firm I work for now, which is Sanford Advisors. And Sanford is the number one bid market firm in Canada uh, for tech M&A. So we do mergers and acquisitions. We help companies think about and plan for uh, either buying other companies or selling their uh, their business. And so um, still on the tech tech side, but when I came to this boutique firm and I'm, I'm operating right now only in the Toronto office by myself. So uh, you need that corporate maturity and that structure and that thinking and that technique to bring it to a boutique firm so you can help, uh, help them actually grow their business. And if you don't have that corporate maturity, you might struggle more. So that's one of the things I realized. It was a very tough decision. I won't lie. I mean, it was it was tough because I also enjoyed what I what I was doing at TSX. They were great to me there. I had a lot of great, uh, you know, mentors, uh, managers as well. And so the experience was amazing. One thing I'll say though, for a lot of people who who want to start leveraging social, mm. like I was always connected to Ed, our CEO here uh, at Sanford, and we we're connected to like events, and we we known each other. We're connected on social. Um, and it was like Friday at 6 p.m. And, and he hits me up on LinkedIn saying, hey, I'd like to run something by you. And I've always respected him as CEO, loved what he was doing with the firm. I said, sure, you know, let's get on the call. And he said, look, I have this, this role I'm thinking about. And I immediately thought of you because it was like on the BD side, the marketing side. And I'm not saying this to toot my horn. What I'm trying to get to for people watching is that that's why you should leverage things or platforms like LinkedIn, like Instagram, because in today's age, not only should you be in someone's radar, but if I think of Mark Mitry, I have to think of three words that I immediately pop in my mind. I shouldn't even hesitate. If I think of you, I should think of like innovation, podcast, and just a good fucking dude, you know, like <laughs> a good friend of mine, right? Whatever those three words. And why that's important is because when I need something, when I think of something that's related in those three avenues that I that describe you, who am I going to call? Mm. You see? Like mm. you have to think about who's actually one phone call away from you versus someone else. And that's the competitive edge that you give yourself by communicating your brand on these different platforms and more importantly, uh, providing value. So anyways, that was a transition, tough decision to make, but, uh, you know, don't regret it for one. And, and the firm has been great, you know, obviously very, very challenging, which is good. Like love the work I'm doing and working with tech founders, uh, and helping them grow the business. Wow. Two things, man. So yeah. I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of us are are on social. I think a lot of us are online. And then we get confused with what we want because we get people that say like, oh, you got to be an entrepreneur. You, you can't do the nine to five. You've got to do this. So yeah. it's like, and like the thing is like, we're super young. You know, we've got so much time. Like if we want to do that startup, like, you know, we can do it five years after we've gotten the experience at, you know, this firm and this yeah. firm. So I think like there's there's so many different decisions that we can make and it's you know it's never usually zero or a hundred and I I loved your point about leveraging social a big big thing that I've learned that's just blown my mind is you have no idea who's watching you have 100%. no idea who's looking at you Love you know it. especially if on LinkedIn you've got all the business people you've got the decision makers it can totally totally change your life I know LinkedIn just putting out stuff has totally changed my life opened up. Mm -hmm incredible opportunities in different ways so it's like the tools there it's never been possible before in human history to get in front of these people at s basically for free right um so you might as well use it it's ridiculous it's ridiculous man and i think uh just because it wasn't there a lot of people kind of just you know brush it off right like they don't take it seriously or they yeah. don't do like that because the opportunity has never been there but people that you know maybe have their head screwed on right, maybe get a catalyst moment, maybe, you know, have this spark, we get to see that, and then you just take full advantage of it, 100%. I yeah, love it. And, and, and there's a couple of things too in there. Like, I think for one, a lot of people don't give it a chance because they're just loaded with excuses. You know, and, mm -hmm. I, and I love, like you shared something, it's like, um, you know, uh, first they, they make fun of you, then they ask you for advice, right? And I felt that too in, in certain cases. And that's because like people just don't, some, either they don't believe in the platform or they've never used it, or they, they say they've used it, but they haven't really put in the work. 
like people fail to understand that, you know, I've been using LinkedIn since like third year of university, you know, I started pushing out content in fourth year, pushing articles. It's been, so I've been graduated for four years now. You know, it's not like I, I did this for like four days and, you know, now I'm just like <laughs> blaming people or spamming people or just connecting with people. Like, I think, you know, knowing, knowing where your position is, really reflecting on like, what value am I going to give you? And then in your reach outs, like just putting some thought, man, you know, I like your point, how you can access everybody, which is true. But at the same time, you have to understand that like, because you can access a lot of people, a lot of people are accessing a lot of people. Mm. And so if you're getting 30, 30 messages or 30 emails, which ones are you going to open? You know, and I'm not talking about like the flashy subject lines. I'm talking about like the persistency, you know, the, the, the commitment to doing your research up front and the diligence and then putting time into thinking about crafting a message that it's going to resonate with you. And so doing that up front um, gives you immense leverage. Man, when, when in, in, a, in a better time can you like open Instagram and DM a basketball player or DM a singer that, that who, who you love or an entrepreneur and having like, you can go right now on Instagram, DM Lewis House or Jay Shetty and I'm, I, well, I can guarantee it, but like 80% they'll reply because they really engage with their audience. Mm -hmm. They'll send you a heart, they'll say thank you. Like you have, you have actual interaction here. And so it's, it's a good time, man. It's a good time to be alive, to quote Drake. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, it, it takes a while. Like I remember when I first, you know, kind of discovered LinkedIn, I remember I'd always see you. I'd always see your face. I'd always, I'm like, and then finally I was like, all right, I'm just gonna message this guy, you know? So it, it takes a while for sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this podcast, your podcast is a great platform of that. You know, I'm a 21 year old kid, but you know, I, you know, I have an interview with Seth Godin, this author, you know, yeah. this billionaire, this person, and, um, you know, it definitely takes a lot of work, definitely takes a lot of time, but you know, eventually if you're persistently consistent and, you know, you have an you have a, maybe an end goal in mind, you can, uh, you can really move your, your position and really open yeah. up a lot of opportunities for yourself. I'll give you an example, man. I'll just on that topic about what you've done, because I remember, well, we never knew each other for one. I know, I, I remember like we reached out on LinkedIn and we kind of talked a bit. Uh, and then this one, and then we, we didn't really talk. And then I remember getting a notification. I think I was at the airport or something. And I, and I see Mark Metry mentioned you in a, in a post. And that's just when I did the Let's Get Honest video. Uh, and then you did yours. And I remember you're like, look, this is my first time, you know, doing a video on LinkedIn, you know, but. I'm going to talk openly about this, you know, certain fears I had in the past. And it was like a three minute video. And I look at that video, like you should do it, but put like this video versus like how you do your podcast now and look at how, how much comfortable, how much more comfortable you are, you know, like that, that's fucking cool. Honestly, like, and, and, I, I, and this is within the time that I've known you. So I can attest to this myself, you know? So it, it's just, it's cool, man. So kudos to you uh, and, and this podcast for this. Thanks, man. You too. So George, when you, so when you came on the podcast, you, um, yeah. you sort of announced book back and yeah. I believe at the time it was, uh, like a private beta or something. Nobody, like it, it wasn't out yet. Um, mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about how that got started. What's the origin story behind book back and, and what's happening with it right now? Sure, man. Uh, okay. So I was on a plane going to Vancouver. I was, I was traveling for work. Uh, I am really not joking about this. It's not like I crafted this story to make it appealing, uh, but I was going to Vancouver. So it's like a five hour trip. I didn't have a book on me. Uh, the screen in front of me, like on the seat wasn't working either. So I was really bored to be, to be frank with you. And every time I, like, I journal a lot, to be honest, I write down a lot of ideas and I constantly think of stuff. Um, but I, I've always wanted to, to create an app for some reason. Like I just wanted to have that kind of tech play. Um, and so I started jotting ideas of maybe like an online bookstore because I love books too. I started, you know, designing wireframes and whatever, uh, like mm. sc screens of, of what it would look like. And throughout the, I got really like passionate about it. And like, I'm trying to think of like names. I don't know why, for some reason, like throughout this whole ride, I was like just jotting, 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 drinking coffee, drawing. And so as soon as I landed, I called two of my co-founders, uh, Ilya and Hikmat. And um, we were friends at the time, but I knew that they were developing apps uh, on the side. So I gave them a call. I run them through. I, I didn't even get to my hotel yet. I'm in the Uber to my hotel. Uh, I tell them about the idea. They love it. As soon as we get there, we start working on this idea. And the whole premise is this. I have a lot of friends in university still. Mm -hmm. and I've, I've graduated four years now. And the process of buying and selling books really hasn't changed. Like People are still using uh, Facebook groups. They're still using Kijiji, Amazon in certain cases. So it's a bit scattered. There wasn't really a platform dedicated for students in that case to buy and sell books easily. And by easily, I mean like reducing the time, 
uh, buying them at a discount, easy to kind of connect with other users. Mm -hmm. So we looked around, we saw the platforms that were out there. And, and I think from what we saw is they either had, you know, terrible like user interface and experience. They just didn't have like good design, whether it was a site or not. And the other problem was that like the, the, the ones that were successful were very specific to a university. You know, so they were tied to a syllabus or a course code or a country, and so they weren't universal. So how do you take something that's like that that hasn't been innovating yet, make it universal, make it easy to use, and just make it simple for version one? Like, let's get this thing out there, let's get it to market, let's validate, uh, and then we can figure it out and iterate. So that's what happened. We started like a beta group. I got a, a bunch of students together, and we asked them questions and. And then we built version one of the app, which launched in August. So now it's on iOS and Android. Um, and in just two days of launching, we cracked the top 100 list for free books, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, and, and so we got good traction, which validated the need for this app. And now we're at a point of let's grow the user base. Let's continue pushing marketing uh, in, in universities where we have good relationships, like University of Ottawa, Ryerson, U of T. And once we grow the user base, then the next step is version two and, and releasing it like a much cooler app, one with better features and, and, and I guess like feature sets that people really want to see. Hmm. Yeah, cool. So when you were, um, when you were drafting all this stuff up on a, on a piece of paper, yeah. um, I mean, what, what were you thinking? I mean, was it kind of um, like, Hey, I'm just bored. I'm going to see where this goes. Or were you were like, Oh, this is going to be really cool. And if it is, then I'm going to look back at this time or, was that even a, a thought or what was going yeah, on? Yeah, especially with my personality. Like, I'm the type of guy who gets really excited about starting, mm. you know, and then in the context of business, uh, at least. And then because I'm very energetic and passionate, I get really, like, excited about starting it and then have, have, a, have a more difficult time in, in being patient with the result. Mm. So with this one, I, I, I wanted to get to that point personally. Like, it was kind of like a learning experience. I'm like, look, like, if we're going to do this, well, one, I have to do my research still. I was really excited about the idea uh, just because it appealed to me. But I was more, honestly, I was more excited about the process. You know, so, mm. so for, for once in my, in my life doing a project, I'm actually excited about the process. I'm not as like um, energetic or enthusiastic about what's, like, what the end outcome is. I'm more mm. excited about what I'm going to learn throughout it, how I'm going to grow this. Um, you know, getting excited about getting to like 1,000 users or 10,000 or raising my first seed. Like, that these are things I'm really, really excited about, just even getting this off the ground. And so when I was writing and, and drawing it up, I wasn't really focused on anything but that. I was just really kind of, uh, I was tied to the idea. I was, I was tied to the fact that I knew I wanted to, to build something and, ha and leave something even, even cooler. Like I could say now with, with, with my co-founders that we, we didn't just talk about it. You know, like we actually put in the work and for a year and a half, dude, I didn't talk about it at all. I never marketed it. Like apart from like a story on my Instagram here and there, but mm -hmm. no, no uh, formal marketing. You know how, how difficult that is for a sales and marketing guy, you know, to be quiet about something you're really excited about and working on it on the side, you know, and then doing it for, for almost two years and then building it and, and pushing it out. Like that's what I'm most excited about that. I was able to be that patient because I'm telling you, dude, there was like three, four times within this process where I was re like really, really ready to pull the plug. I just didn't, I didn't see the value anymore. And then I was like, like, I'm, I'm, it's Friday at like eight, nine p.m., and I'm on the, I'm on, I'm on this like phone call with my co-founders, and we're talking about strategy. And like, you're gonna question yourself, like, what are we, what are we doing here? You know? And there's nothing even out there. I can't even see it. That's the worst part. Like, for me as a business guy, like they're developing it, developing the code, so they get to see at least some framework. I'm here, like, literally visualizing what this is gonna look like, and visualizing how I'm gonna pitch it, and how I'm gonna walk on stage and present this whole thing. And so that's keeping me motivated throughout this whole time. I just, I'd, I'd be on a treadmill in the gym and I'm like, you know, just th that feeling of like walking on stage and pitching book back, you know, going from sitting, uh, you know, as, as an audience and then, and then to, to being one to talk about a uh, startup. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I know patience is a, uh, it's a real thing. I've definitely struggled with it. There's that saying that, um, it takes 10 years to get something that you want. And then even then, you know, there. Are, I don't even think you know. You should have. Ex you definitely should have expectations, but you really never know how it'll go. Um, yeah. How? I mean, how do you? I mean, you talked about it a little bit, but I mean, what w would you give any advice to 
to, you know, especially young people that, you know, are just starting something, just starting an app and, you yeah. know, they, they've got it like the, the high of the starting something. Right. And then in reality, you know, it's going to take like three, five years for like anybody to, to actually know about it. I mean, you, you talked about the treadmill, but what advice would you give to, to entrepreneurs that, that need that lesson of patience? Yeah, and this is honestly coming from someone who, who really finds this difficult, and I'm telling you this because uh, I'm just honest. Like I know myself yeah. well, and um, I think I think for one, and this I always say this, and it's cheesy, but it's true. Like you really have to pick something you enjoy doing, and and everybody will say, okay, George, but how do you how do you get there? Like, how did you find something you enjoy doing? Well, if you can do it without getting paid, and you can do it and actually enjoy doing it, like you know if you're enjoying it, if you enjoy doing it. I can't answer that for you. You either like it or you don't. OK, and I'm not saying you're going to like it every day. Like, you know, sometimes I'll go to the gym and I don't feel like working out, but I still do it because I enjoy it and I enjoy the process and the outcome. And that's what I mean. I'm not saying every day is going to be amazing. I'm just saying, can you do something that you enjoy? As an example, you do this podcast in the beginning. You did it because you just like having good conversations with people that you think can add value to your community. It's, it's that simple. You weren't getting paid for it. I'm assuming like you're just building this infrastructure and you did it because you liked it similar to my podcast or similar to this app. So I think if you start this way and then you can figure out a way to monetize, um, why that's important to patients is because during the times where it's difficult, you're going to stick to something you enjoy. If you, you're doing something you don't like and it gets difficult, what are you going to end up doing? Probably you're going to stop. You're going to quit, right? Yeah. It, I mean, this is, this is the rationale behind when, when someone tells you do something you love. I'm just trying to break it down for people. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you really have to talk yourself into being patient. It's not mm -hmm. like it, it's a bit of a habit, right? So when I get that high, and it helps if you have co-founders who are complementary to your weaknesses. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Both my co-founders are technical. When we have the call and I get excited, I'm like, guys, this is what we should do. And I'm thinking like version eight. They're like, George, love the enthusiasm. Let's put it on our feature list. We're not there yet. Because keep in mind, George, we have to do two, three, and four, and five, six, seven before we get to eight. And I'm like, dude, you're right. So they kind of pull me back. And they're not pulling back like my dreams and my – no, but mm -hmm. they just keep me in check. And so together – because imagine two – like if we had three co-founders and we're, all three of us are like this. We'll never get anything done. You know, We're just living in like, in like fantasy land. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah, align yourself with people who kind of complement that, that gap or weakness. Uh, and the last thing is like really just try to have fun with it, you know, and by, by, by that, I mean, like you really have to reflect on uh, why it is you're doing it, you know, and if you're in it for the wrong reasons, then when shit gets tough, man, you're not going to make it through. Reed Hoffman always talks about the valley of the shadow. And I always refer to this, like you're going to get to a point where you're going to question, do you want to do this? Should I continue? Is this worth it? And so I don't know, just enjoy it. Like I'm not doing this for any other reason than I, I really, really like building this business. I'm learning a lot from it. And hopefully we bring value to students and whatever other outcome comes from it. We raise money, we make money. Amazing. We'll make this app better for people. It's that simple. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Very well yeah. said, man. Yeah. hundred percent. I was, um, I was just talking to, um, this, uh, this Olympian Donald Sujo and he told me mental toughness is doing the same thing as yesterday. And you can definitely take that in a bad way, but if you really yeah. understand the process, that's what it is. It's showing up, you know, despite, you know, this, this backfiring, you know, your, your feelings going this way, your thoughts going this way, your body feeling this way. That's what it comes down to, man. So when you were, when you were building or you were in the process of, of creating this app, were you thinking at any time, like, uh, hey, I should, you know, maybe not do this because I've got to focus on my job. Or how did you, how did you balance the, you know, having a, a normal job and working on the sort of startup app? Mm, that's a, that's a good question, man. I think the first thing I always tell people is find synergy in everything you're doing. Okay, what that means is like I'm not going full left field, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. Like if your heart is in, I don't know, opening up like a bakery, then go and do it. You know, and find a way to like get there. Maybe start like a blog, a blog about, I don't know, baked goods, you know, maybe make some money off of it. Then start, you know what I mean? Like micro to macro. But for me, like, keep in mind, everything I'm doing circles around tech, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is about storytelling and content creation. So creating this app wasn't extremely left field for my skill set. 
I just have to align with people who can get me to that stage, who can actually develop that and who can rely on me to do what I do well, you know, which is market, advertise, brand, sell, raise, like network. That's what I do. Communicate. That, that, that's who I am, you know? And so uh, doing a lot of things on the side is okay. So long as you can one manage your time and to manage your time, you have to find synergies. And what I mean by that is, you know, I'm not like, it's easier to market and brand and stuff because I can find time windows within my day to do that. Another thing is work efficiently. Like, I'm sorry, but everybody will, will jump to the conclusion to say, oh, like you're on Instagram all day. No, I just don't take an hour lunch break. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. But like, you know, when I'm walking to the gym, I'll, I'll do a story that you think I'm like sitting all day prepping for. You know, when I'm when I'm in bed before I go to sleep, I'm doing like marketing for Bookback. I'm on a call with my co-founders. Like, I'm just I'm maximizing my time that you might might not uh, be doing. So I think that's that's the, the the one thing is maximizing your potential, but also being effective with stuff. You know, like, and by the way, I'm at fault of this as well. But sometimes, you know, like you have those days where you're getting distracted, and and then you stop and you're like, wow, like I'm wasting so much time. Well, think about like a day where you're fully maximizing it. And I actually find like putting stuff within your day that you can do outside of just your one dimension makes you actually better at that one dimension. I'll give you an example. You remember, if you go back to school, if you ever did uh, like sports or extracurriculars, weren't you more effective in class? Yeah. Okay. They all have synergy in some case, right? They're not really, what they're doing is if you play sports like on the side, you go back to school up more productive because you're healthy. Not only that, because you're playing sports, you also understand uh, the importance of teamwork, of dedication, of showing up, of commitment. You bring that to the classroom, and now all of a sudden, if you think about like, oh, I don't want to do my homework, you're like, hold on. Like, what, would I not do my 10 free throws today because I don't feel like it? No, because I have a game that I'm prepping for. So it's the same thing. You know, I'll give you an, an example here. What I'm doing with Bookback actually helps me with work with Sanford because now when I'm dealing with founders, I come from – a place of entrepreneurship and not just banking. And now I'm leveraging my experience to say, look, I'm in your fucking shoes. Like I understand where you're coming from. I resonate better with you. And so, um, yeah, find synergy, be effective with your time, maximize your day. Um, and, and more importantly, just try different things. That's the last one. Don't be afraid to try different things. Even if it doesn't turn out well, dude, everybody's going to forget about it in a week. Hmm. You understand? Like, yeah. Okay, if you started this podcast and you never liked it, and a week from now you do something different, people will forget and then start remembering the new stuff that you do. Easy. But at least you tried. You can, you can say you liked it or you didn't. If you never did this podcast, you're going to be 95, you know, hopefully still healthy, but sitting you know, and looking in the mirror and be like, fuck, I wish I did this podcast. Now you can say, I did it, and you can look at your grandkids and say, Get, you know, guess what? Get, or guess who I had on my, on my podcast? I had Seth Godin when I was 21. What are you doing with your time? You know, like in a, in a humorous way, but anyways, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 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 Without a doubt. Um, dude, it's all about, um, it's not about work-life balance. It's about, uh, integration, right? Yeah. It's just about, and like, the thing is, is like, if you, if you want it badly enough, you'll figure out a way to do it. Like you'll, you'll 100%. write your LinkedIn post, like in between your bicep curls, like you'll do it on your walk. <laughs> you'll, you will figure it out. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, I think maybe a lot of people maybe just use that as an excuse to not do it. Right. Like, oh, I don't have time. And like, obviously, there's certain exceptions and, and, and this and that. But, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think if you want it and you take responsibility and ownership for it, you will find a way no matter what. Um, so, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people that um, – because I want to I wanna drill down a little bit more on this. I talk to a lot of people that, that do have nine to five jobs, but they have like this um, – this this desire to 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 be maybe like an entrepreneur. Maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's they just want something different. Mm. Um, did was you know when you were working at the Toronto Stock and Chase was was this something that um, was, was kind of cooking up in your in your head? And um, do you think that it would have caused you, you know, more? more misery, more discomfort if you didn't go ahead and, and get the idea out there. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You can, I'm serious. Like even ask my managers that I was working for, you know, I never got like 
super bad, like a negative review or anything. And again, I was doing all this on the side. And here's the integration part again, because I was doing these things on the side, I was actually working like 12 times harder because I didn't want what I was doing to be an excuse of my bad performance at, uh, with my full time. You understand? The other part is because I was doing these things on the side, it allowed me to be more creative. Like it opened up kind of like a space in my head that allowed me to be less linear and rigid. And it, that fed into my work. I was always looking for ways to like make things more automated or problem solve and I would be more curious. Um, and a lot of the things I did, to be honest, I credit TMX because they gave me that ability. And a lot of people in, inside the company believed in me. So honestly, kudos to the company, kudos to a lot of the people I worked for. Really, like, I mean, to this day, they still support me. Like, they'll send me an email saying, really, like, really happy to see you doing well and, and do, like doing the things more importantly that you want to do. Um, so I think it's also important to work for a company whose culture allows you to do these things, especially early in the game. Mm -hmm. I would never work for a company, for example, that doesn't support the things I do. And here's the way I would address it. If a company ever comes to you and says, George, why are you doing these things on the side? I'll say, look, I can go home and watch Netflix all day. And that's okay. Sometimes I do, by the way. That's fine. Like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I'm free to do whatever I want with my time on the side. So long as there's no conflict of interest, for sure. I'm not saying, like, compete with your firm or, you know, uh, steal its clients. Like, uh, again, we're talking like business here. But, but I'm saying... I can go home and, and play Fortnite for six hours, or I can go home and work on Bookback. Are you like, which, which one do you prefer? If you're a CEO of a company, which one do you prefer I do? Seriously, like, do you want to product? So again, I think it just depends on priorities, man. Like yeah. if I'm happy doing this and I'm doing something I like and it's meaningful, it's inspiring other people, I'm happy doing it. Some people are happy playing Fortnite, God bless you. Like I have nothing against it. Again, that may open up more avenues of creativity. Really, like I don't have anything against these different activities. I'm just saying, because I think corporate always looks at it and says, you just have to do your full time. Some of them do. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're not allowed to, you know, blog on the side or it's going to distract you from work. No, like I'm actually really against that. So long as you can perform well here, but also have things that, that are different about you. You know, yeah. who are you outside of work? If I'm only known as, at the time, you know, George Khalifa associate at TSX. Well, there's, there's a ton of associates. There's a ton of MDs. There's a ton of managers. You know, but you're more than just your role at work. Why? Because how many roles can, can you can you come up with right now? If I, if I ask you this question. Okay, so there's Mark Metric, right? You have a role as a host right now. Mm -hmm. If when we turn this off, your role with me is as a friend or a peer, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You're also a son, mm -hmm. right? You might be a sibling. That's another role. You might be a brother to a sister. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be a student if you're still studying. You could be an employee, like an analyst, an employee. How many roles, man, do you have in life? So many. It's not just so one, many. right? And, and they're all different. They all require different things from you. And so if all you think of yourself is just one role, and I've seen this, and the reason why I'm so passionate about this, too, I've seen it even within uh, like personal uh, relationships, is that when, when that when that meaning that you attach to that role is gone, what happens to you? You attach your identity to your role. This is a real thing. It's called IR theory, identity and role, okay? If you're on an island, you just wake up right now, there's nothing, there's no computer, there's no humans 2.0, there's just you, okay? 100% of you is tied to your identity because there's no roles. So your identity doesn't fluctuate. In this world, what happens is like, you as a humans 2.0 podcast host, that's your, your big role. You might attach so much meaning to it. If tomorrow, for example, that stops, and that's the only thing that you give 100% meaning to, God forbid something, something happens and that dissipates, what happens is your identity, which is attached to your roles, goes down. Now you suddenly don't know who you are anymore because you can't pull out a business card and say, hey, George Khalifa, director of BDA, Sam. You see? So who are you outside of that one dimension? Because if you can't answer that, I, I guarantee you, you're going to have uh, like a... Um, a bit of a car, like you don't just don't you you wouldn't know who you are anymore, and I see that with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, I de I definitely went through something like that. I know exactly what you mean, um, one hundred percent. And um, I I really like what you said about the the linear versus creative thinking. Like yeah. um, I feel like um. I feel like we have this belief, like before we dive into something, we're always like, oh, no, no, no I, I, you know, I can't do too many things. And you obviously, you don't want to be jammed up with a thousand things to do. But oftentimes what I've learned is 
you know, the more responsibility you end up taking up, the more you yourself end up becoming the person that 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 needs to happen in order to take care of those things. And you actually, mm -hmm. just like you said, you start building up those momentum from all these different things. And it really becomes this synergistic ecosystem in which all these different things are feeding off of each other. And you're actually more productive you're more efficient with your time. And in turn, I don't know about you, but I'm way happier when things are like that, you know? Um, and I don't think that this, this is really talked about that much. So George, th thanks for bringing that up, man. Um, yeah, man. So, so to start wrapping things up here, um, yeah. where, where can people get in touch with you? Where can they connect with you? Um, we'll, we'll have all the links below, but is there anything specific that you want people to check out? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you obviously get, uh, can connect with me on different social platforms. Uh, on Instagram, it's Khalif Style, K H A L I F E S T Y L E. I'm sure you'll you'll probably put it in the description box. Uh, LinkedIn, George Khalife. Facebook, just my name. So I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You can find me on YouTube as well with my podcast. I do sometimes different videos, and uh, more. Also, check out Bookback. Honestly, if you're if you're a student or a book lover, check out the app. Download it. You know, test it out and let me know how I can uh, make it better for you. Yeah. Awesome. Dude, I can't wait to listen to this podcast in <laughs> like five years when uh book back is uh well hold on, hold on. Before we wrap up here, I want to ask you, is you have um do you have an do you have an end goal for this? Are you trying to are you trying to exit? Are you trying to grow this out? What do you have an end plan in mind? Mm, that's a good point. I, I don't think of it that way, to be honest. I don't have like a like a particular end goal. Um mm -hmm. I, that that answer may change. Like if I raise, you know, money, if we start making revenue and we get to that point, then maybe my answer change. For now, I just want to grow it. I want to grow it. I want to create an app that really solves people's pain points, and I want to validate this concept. And I want to say I, I, I did it. And if I fail, I'm going to take every fucking thing I learned. I'm going to create a new business. That's a real winner right there, man. I don't know why I had too many coffees. I swear. <laughs> One. So <laughs> Fridays, man. Yeah, let's grab coffee, right? <laughs> I'm serious about the coffee too. <laughs> Dude, I could, uh, Jeff Bezos is totally going to acquire a book back. I don't know if that, if you're interested in that. Um, I hope why, so. Why well, did I just say that as if I'm, okay, all right, cool. All right, George, <laughs> final, <laughs> final thing, man. I like to yeah. uh, request that my guests leave the audience with a self-inquisitive question, question they can kind of ask themselves, and I'd love it if you could ask them a question, man. Sure, man. Uh Look, you're going to die. So what do you want to leave behind? Yeah. Simple. I love what do you want to leave behind, I, man? You're, you're all going to die. Like, uh, and this is something I have to reflect more on, you know, but you're like one day you won't exist anymore. All that's going to exist is what people remember of you. And so do you want these memories to be good, positive, inspiring, motivating, you know, life changing? And you, you could have that impact, even if it's with one person, you know, and it doesn't have to be a business. Sorry, I'm just explaining this, but. It could be how you make someone feel. It could be through your character, your behavior. Uh, and we all have ups and downs. I'm not, you know, uh, kind of um, diluting that fact. I'm just saying, like, just try to remember that, you know. And every time you want to start something and you, you, you think you can't or you don't, you're not good enough, just think, like, you're, you're also going to die one day. So why not just try it? Because all of this will be meaningless. So give it a go mm -hmm. and at least be happy with what you're doing and be fulfilled and li live with a, with a sense of purpose because one day – um, the thing that you can never get back is regret, you know, and that, and that's a yeah. poison to a life, you know? So just try, try. Yeah. And odds are, you're probably not going to remember the, the insecurity, the fear, the doubt, all that stuff, or, you know, it'll be worth it at the exactly. end. So Dude, I, the last thing I'll tell people is like, I've gotten more praise and like more love just for doing stuff, like just for trying. It's not like I'm, I'm the CEO of like a fortune 500 or anything. But I think what people like is like, just like with you is when people, when I, when I see my friends really trying, sticking to something, being consistent, and more importantly, progressing with what they're doing, there's nothing in the world that makes me happier. Dude. Mm -hmm. You know how like thrilled I am to see like how successful you, you, you know, you, you've been on humans 2.0. It's cool. Cause like I've, I've seen you before it. And so man, it's just it like what, I don't know. It just doesn't get better than that. Cause I, when someone really goes and, and takes a limb and, and does what, what they want to do, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like a, there's like a euphoria to it, you know, just because it takes a lot of courage. And I know I know how much or how difficult it is. Yeah. And it's motivating for, you know, for whatever you're doing, too. Um, yeah. And people are watching. Just remember that, dude. People are watching. I'm telling you, 
you know? And so next time where you feel sluggish and shit, like understand that like there's someone somewhere looking at your Insta and it, all it takes is like one story that you share or one quote or one thing that you do that they're going to reach out and say, dude, because of you, I want to try something. And like, it's so, it's like a, the butterfly effect. That one data point can alter everything in their life. You understand? Like you, I mean, you have a responsibility, so it's not light, like make use of it, man. Yeah. 100%. I love it. And it goes back to, you know, the first question, how do you spend your time here on planet earth? <laughs> well, maximize your potential, baby. I love you guys. Thanks, I love man. it. Appreciate I love it, man. I don't want to end on an Instagram note than that. Thank you to everyone out there for listening. This has been your host, Mark Metric. Damn, you made it till the end of the podcast. That's really rare in the age of digital distraction. This really means the world to me. I really hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to hop on over to my website, Mark Metry, or message me on social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. My name is Mark Metry, M-A-R-K-M-E-T-R-Y. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you learned in this episode and i'll be sure to get in touch with you and if you really really love the podcast i'd highly appreciate it if you went on itunes right now and left me a review it helps way more than you know let's get this humans 2.0 grassroots movement going Woo! get out there and do something impactful today